Hello, I'm Will Stahl, and today I'm going to be tearing into a pair of standard manufactured track spikes. I decided to do this since I'm currently building my own custom spikes, so be sure to check out my channel if you want to see that process. This teardown is going to show some of the intricate and hidden design features that aren't normally seen from the outside, one of which is pretty important, so let's get started. Alright, so the spike I'll be tearing apart today is a Saucony Velocity 5. It's an entry level spike designed for the 400 to 5000 meter events. It has some features that probably make it more suitable and probably cheaper for entry level runners, but at the cost of weight and performance. The first thing I did was tear out the insole. The first thing I should have done was take out the laces, which I did soon enough. The insole was glued in and some of the foam stuck to the part beneath because I wasn't careful enough while pulling it out. The glue wasn't applied much except in the center line of the shoe, so it was easier to start tearing out. Then I started heating up the sole with the intention of melting the glue that connected the sole to the upper. I ended up melting some of the thinner parts of the upper, but I eventually weakened the glue enough to peel the sole off. The rubber outsole and the two layers of foam started peeling, and I have to say that this glue job is much cleaner than what I have on my custom spikes. Of course, I don't have my own factory and I don't know exactly what glue is used, so I'll stick to shoot glue since it works just fine. I also tried peeling the cardboard looking piece from the inside of the shoe, but it proved to be more difficult than just peeling off the sole. With some good leverage, I started to pull the sole from the upper until I got to the spike plate, then the sole separated into two parts, the spike plate and everything behind it. I peeled the rubber off and revealed how the spike plate extends a little further into the sole than we can usually see, which was nice. The rubber, by the way, is one of those entry-level features I alluded to earlier. Rubber isn't common in spikes because it's heavier than using a plastic outsole. It is almost definitely more durable though, which will make the shoe last longer, further reducing the amount of money someone will have to spend on these spikes. But to get the spike plate off, I had to use a razor to slowly separate it from the upper and eventually got the plate by itself. Next, I wanted to measure some of the dimensions. The insole came in at about four millimeters, which is about standard for regular running shoes, if only slightly thin. This was another entry level feature. It makes the shoe softer to run in and thus more accessible. But most premium racing shoes have thinner insoles to save weight and increase responsiveness. They can also get too thin, like my Saucony Endorphin Spike, which seems like it just has a piece of suede in the insole. In the spikes I'm making right now, I want something kind of in the middle. Then I measured the thickness of the plate, and I was kind of surprised to see it come in at about 3 millimeters. For comparison, the plate on my custom spikes is 1 millimeter thick. I might try to go thicker after learning this, but I did settle on 1 millimeter because of some testing. I'm not using PBAX plastic, like in this spike that I'm tearing apart, I'm using 3D printed nylon, which seems to be a lot less flexible. As you can see here, the PBAX plate bends quite a lot before getting damaged, and my nylon will snap with a lot less flexing. As for other measurements, the plate is thickest at the tip of the teeth features, and it comes in at about 7 to 8 millimeters, which means each tooth extends 4 to 5 millimeters out of the plate. This is also thicker than the teeth in my spike plate design, but I do plan on making those a little bit bigger. And now, the main event. Here I use this wire cutter to cut through the plastic and reveal one of the spike receptacles embedded inside. It wasn't the easiest thing to cut out, but eventually I freed the receptacle. It has a lot of leverage within the plate, and by how difficult it was to get out with a wire cutter, I can see why these receptacles don't get dislodged very often. It's about 4.5 millimeters thick, which is another reason I should probably thicken the teeth in my own spike plate design, as it's 4 millimeters at its thickest. I do need it to receive standardized spikes. And the entire diameter of this feature is about 17 millimeters, which gives it that reliable leverage. It really appears to be a modified T-nut being shorter than an average T-nut and having a sloped flange. The one thing I found especially weird about this shoe is the cardboard piece right under the insole. It's pretty rigid, and I think it's a solution to prevent the upper from peeling off the sole. When the upper is pulled, it must contend with this rigid piece before it can 
exert a peeling force on the sole. I believe this was implemented because this midsole does not have a lip like a molded insole. It has a square edge look much like my own custom midsoles because this foam was die cut and not molded. It's a heavy solution and it's weird that a running shoe has a tree based material inside. So that's everything I wanted to talk about regarding the shoe teardown. I had a few takeaways like the spike plate thickness and just seeing one of the spike receptacles goals up close. If you want to see how I implement these lessons in my own custom spikes, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Until then, thanks for watching.